Alright everybody, this is Eternal Blade and welcome to part 6 of the Flintlock Pistol Tutorial. We have made quite a lot of progress and we are nearing the end stages of our journey. I hope. But that remains to be seen. So we will continue on. And right, let's do that right now. Continuing on at some point. So, I think we're going to just take this, press W, and drag it over here. Okay. Alt W to go into your uh, four views here. And you see how it kind of uh, changes to boxes? That has to do with your adaptive degradation. You can turn that off if you don't want to see it. It's just to try to speed up the process. Um, all right. Let's actually go to our front view here. Press E. Oops, watch out. Rotate it just so it's about flat. Okay. Turbo smooth, we can bring this down. Um, let's press 1. W. Drag these in a bit. Drag these in a bit. Okay. And let's click this, connect, oops, control Z. You only want to have one connection. Okay, there we go. And we're actually going to hide that just so we can see. So it actually is a bit bigger. So it goes to about here. Push R, scale it out a bit. Editable poly, 1, W, and drag it over here. Okay. And this is supposed to go under that. And we're going to give it, press A to turn off angle, or to turn on angle snap. Let's actually turn it off maybe. And just align it so you have a uh, straight line right here. It's actually supposed to go pretty much the entire way underneath. Alright. And then, it looks like, let's click, shift click. Okay, I'll just do that. Hope you can't hear that washing machine in the background. It is Sunday, and it is time to do the laundry. All right, let's slide this over here. Oops. Okay. Select these three faces, bevel, and just kind of bevel them out a bit. All right. And next... I think I want to select this, connect, and slide it a bit more that way, just to kind of, there we go. So we're trying to create a uh, bulge almost in this area. We've partially succeeded. This, press 1. Make sure you're in perspective instead of orthographic. Just makes life a little easier. Okay. And let's click these, connect to, and we'll just slide that a bit. There we go. That's exactly what we want. And it looks like there is a bit of a bulge on this end as well. So we're going to here connect one segment, slide it over, click this polygon here, push R, and scale it up slightly. And gonna give it a bevel. And maybe we went a little too high there. Let's push one, select these and these, W. And just drag them back a bit. 
There we go. Maybe we'll give it a gray so we can actually see it. Alright, that looks uh, pretty good. Maybe we will go on the front viewport here. Find out where we floated to. Select these and these are and maybe scale them out even a bit more. Alright, and do the same with these. Okay. And maybe W bring these back a bit. Okay. That looks pretty decent. One more turbo smooth iteration. Okay. Uh, next, we need I'm just looking at our picture here to see what we actually need. It looks like there is a let's hide that. There's a piece that extends underneath here. So we're going to select this and this. That's about right. Um, shift, drag them down. Clone to object. Okay. And on that object, oops, make sure you actually select the object. Uh, yeah, we'll do it that way. Just extrude them out a little bit. Okay. Apply turbo smooth. And then let's connect. And it's kind of rounded, so right to about there. Connect, bring this one all the way right there. Click, shift click, connect with no slide. Press one and W and drag this one out just a bit. Alright, that's the exact shape we're looking for. And now what we can do is effect pivot only, center to object, and drag it right up, make it gray. Alright, now we just got to align it here. So simply bring these verts up a little bit, maybe bring these down just a bit. Alright, and there we go. Now I'm pretty sure there's going to be a rivet of some sort. So we're going to take this and shift drag it, copy, press E, make sure angle snap is on by pushing A, rotate it 90 degrees, Go into the front viewport here, drag it right here, Alt W, and just try to center it up. Press R, scale it down, and drag it into place. Rotate it a bit if necessary. All right. And that looks pretty good. Not sure if there's one there. I can't actually see it, but it looks like there should be. I think what I'm going to do is actually scale that up just a bit. There we go. To give it a bit of a thicker look. Um, let's see here. I kind of like that. It looks like it's just worn wood. That's going to be really cool with the textures on it. That's why, again, you do it by hand. Uh, it's not perfect, but it'll uh, it'll do. Yeah, okay. Um, next, <laughs> I actually think I want to redo this little thing here at the end. Let's make a box. And 
please auto grid and just kind of do like that. And let's convert it to an editable poly. Click here, bevel it outward. Click these, scale them out just a bit. Okay. And then let's apply a turbo smooth. And click here. Now we could be using these things up here. Uh, they have, let's see, there should be something called a swift loop, which just lets you, you see the little green line that appears. It's a little difficult to place sometimes though. Okay, and click and click, connect to, pinch it out. And there we go, I like that a lot better than what we previously had. So go into our four view here and simply line it up. Okay, in all the views. All right, I'll just delete this. Maybe scale this up just a bit. W, sync it down. And there we go, that looks more realistic, something that actually be made and maybe we'll actually uh, click, shift click, connect one segment and slide it up to the top there. You have a slightly flatter top. Okay. Looks pretty good. Make sure it just doesn't intersect in the barrel. Checking our mesh over here. Okay. So right here, uh, we have a problem. So let's click this, this, height unselected. Most of it we don't have to worry about, but some areas we do. So let's click these. Wow, that's interesting. Not sure what was up with that one. Or what was up with this one. Weird. Seems like they got uh, crossed accidentally somehow. Well, a little work can't fix. And we're going to want to click this, this, all these ones here. Okay. And bring them in. Just like that. Okay. Finally, these two are going to need to come in, as is this one. And maybe this one as well. Okay. Let the turbo smooth go. There we go, much better. Um, Still think we need to work on it a bit. Let's uh, select this polygon here. Oops, watch out. And let's see, we want to bring it out. So click these two. Let's just extrude them, okay? Now, in our front view here, let's 
press 1. Select. Um, these few vertices. Okay. There's W. And let's move them over. Actually, is this what I want to do? I'm trying to make it so it kind of curves in. Actually, let's undo all that. First thing, let's go to Customize, Preferences, General, and then Levels of Undo. Make that like 99. There we go. Just, just so that way we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Um, so it should all come up right to the edge. All right, let's take this and this. Maybe drag them up that way. Click and kind of maneuver it like so. Back just a bit. All right, that's better. And let's see. Vertex. No. There's no real way of doing that easily without cutting uh, some stuff. It's actually not bad. That kind of curves in. Okay, well, we'll let it be there. So just check on the whole mesh as a whole, make sure we don't have any holes or anything yet. Unhide all. Perfect. All right. Uh, next, let's work on the top portion. So, height unselected. So now we just have the. Oh, that looks pretty cool. The inside area here. Polygon. We want to take this polygon and press Q okay select it all the way down the spine press W and go in your front view for this and shift drag it up okay cloned object perspective make it gray so we can differentiate it and select all the polygons here and just simply extrude them along their local normals a little bit okay apply it's only one apply and then give it a nice small one all right effect pivot only centered object and let's just drag them. Oops. Turn off the effect pivot only. Drag it right back down. Okay. Perspective. Click here. Connect. Slide it right to the edge. All right, and over here, we're gonna need the same thing. So connect, slide it over to the other edge. Okay. Now when we apply turbo smooth, click turbo smooth, two iterations. Now we'll have ourselves a nice uh, little thing and extend the thickness out a bit. Okay. And let's actually click, shift click, connect that once okay press w in the front viewport move that one up just a tad all right what that'll do is leave us kind of a hump in the middle 
Not a big one, but enough. Okay, go here, one, and you can click this button. It'll show the uh, finalized mesh while we work with it. Okay, and just go in here and work it until it sinks in, but yet it's not visible. Or sinks in and is visible. Okay, drag it back a little bit. you grab them all. Okay, and the rest looks pretty good. Down a bit and bring this down a bit. Okay. And uncheck that. Go here. Unhide all. And actually hide the piece right there. Click our little poly again. Hit these, and these actually kind of just fade right in. Or at least they should. Okay. And let's go to our little poly here. Click, 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 and click. Extrude a little bit. Press W, drag it down, and that will give us the uh, fade in that we require. Okay. Just maybe we'll make it a bit longer. Scale it so they're flush. W and just drag it, scale it in. There, you go. now we have kind of a smooth transition there. And we can also, on the bottom here, W, F3 to make sure you got all of them, and simply drag it down. That way we fill up the entire gap, which is what the actual picture looks like. Okay. Uh, there's also a rivet of some sorts on the top. You see right here we have this one, and then we have kind of a little bulge right there. We should copy this. E. Make sure your angle snap is on. Unhide all. And try to go on your front viewport here. Line this right up. Okay. Push R and just scale it up a bit. E. Okay. W. Try to put it in place. And lastly, just scoot it over until we're about centered. And there we go. And maybe bring it a bit down. R and scale it in just a bit. Alright, there we go. Give that a turbo smooth to make it happy. And actually we'll just click, shift click, connect slide it down like that All right, there we go now we've got that piece whatever it is and my picture disappeared let's see we have one other little bulge right here 
we're going to use this piece that we've already made. Drag it back. Okay. That's going to be right in line with this area. Okay. It's actually relatively small, so we're going to scale this one down. Actually, move this one over a bit. Oops. There we go. And click there. And then elongate it. Okay. Right about there. Seems good. And then we're going to click, oops, watch out, connect with zero pinch and zero slide. Press one, select all those, and just give it a bit of a curve. Perspective, okay, there we go. Um, let's see. There's also a. Oh, we already got that one. Never mind. Um, trying to see what else we're missing on the one side before we move on to the next. I wish I could see the uh, front and side views of this, but or the the front and back. But oh well. We're not always so lucky. So I guess we can work on this part now. So take our plane. Huh. Huh. Wow. And we'll actually just kind of model this ourselves. Um, make a box and just kind of give it some height. Convert it to an editable poly and just connect and start following the lines. Okay, this is the easy fun part. But for some reason, it's not. Oh, there we go. Saying it wasn't quite aligned, but that's because I wasn't in the actual correct view. Okay, extrude this out. Uh, we'll give it three times. Three times for now, that is. Okay, and then bring it up. We're trying to make it a little bit bigger than the actual uh, what's it called? Than the actual screw, um, because it covers it. Okay. So, and you can bring these down and in. Perfect. Now, keep working over here. We drag these a bit different. Ooh, laundry is done. I'll grab it in a second. So, I'll click these, extrude. Alright, one, two, three. One, two, three. Just as easy as A, B, C. One, two, three. Okay. Um, so we're just going to keep going along here. Nothing too exciting. We're just trying to outline the shape so that we can get the basic gist of what it looks like. Extrude. I'll give it two. All right, we're starting our curve up, so the bottom's got to be always a little bit uh, more dense or less dense than the top. That way, we can get our curve and the mesh kind of flows in that direction. Extrude. Oops, watch out. OK. 
Okay. All right. And we'll give it extrude that many more. And let's see here. These are going to be the top. This will be the side. And this will kind of be the final curve. Okay, there we go. Now in your perspective view here, click or press 2 to go into edge selection. Click, shift click, connect. Two connections and pinch it way far out. Okay. Do it turbo smooth. We'll give it two segments, and there we have it. We have the uh, well that side done. It actually looks pretty damn close to the actual real one. If we just look at our image here, this compared to this, pretty close. Okay. Next, let's click it and bring it up and press E rotate it 180 degrees okay and then we can actually make that go away file save as you always want to save again big thing 13 okay press W and just drag it out alright now this is lined up. Let's see here. Go in the front view. Press F3. So the way it works is it's kind of the ends kind of lined up with this, like so. I'm guessing something like that. trying to see if any of the screws would go all the way through okay let's hide selected so we still got some work to do a bit farther down actually okay and there we have it. That's positioned accordingly. We still have to build up the areas around it. Um, that shouldn't be a problem. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I wanted to fix this. Go into your vertex here. Uh, and click here, here, and in the middle. And just drag those forward. There we go, just so it doesn't go inside there. All right. I'm guessing that there's actually one of these over on this side as well. Or else it wouldn't be able to stay in place. Okay, there we go. Maybe a slightly larger one. All right. And let's see. I think there's going to be one right here too. So press W, shift, drag it over. Oops, on your front view here. And press E, rotate, W, and sink it right in. There we go, push R, maybe scale it out a bit. And then put it back, there we go. All right, perfect. See, it's coming along nicely. We have the nice complexity of our pistol, and uh, once we texture it up, it'll look really nice. I'm hoping. 
Right, maybe increase the size of this just a bit. And okay. I'm just not sure about this right here. Thinking, let's click polygon, select all these, and scale them in just a bit more. There we go, just so they don't show. Okay. Mm. And let us see what we want to do. Let us see what we want to do. Let's scale this just a bit more. Make that one a bit bigger. Okay. Um, I guess we do have to just work on this part. Man, I don't want to work on this part. I guess what I want isn't a... No one cares what I want. So let's just press W. We'll drag it out just for now. Click these. Uh, hide unselected. Go in here, and this is going to be our back view, I believe. Well, it should have been our back view. But for some reason, our back view is. Oh, there we go. Um, so, so we're trying to use all the available mesh we have. And actually, let's unhide all. We need to outline the mesh we want, so we're going to use the same technique we did before with our line. Just kind of curve around. The mesh we want. Okay. Uh, edit this vertice right here, it's a bit high. Okay, there we go. Uh, click it again, press E, rotate it 180 degrees, press W, and swoop it into place. Okay, so right there is good. Now, you have to position it accordingly. Actually, that doesn't look so bad. A bit more this direction. Okay. And so that's where we need to make our cuts, approximately. So, let's go here. We'll just open up another perspective view. And we'll just start kind of cutting. Okay, cut, cut, It'll go through here, trying to use whatever geometry we can, so most of this we can use, and then we'll cut up. Okay. And that'll be good. And lastly, we need to cut from here to here and to there. Okay. Now that we've got all of those fancy polygons, we have to select a lot of them. So press Q for select and have at it. Wildly click as fast as you can. OK. 
Okay. And we'll unselect that one and that one. Okay. Alt click any ones you didn't mean to select. Alright, and that looks like about them all. And then what we do is we ex bevel it. Bevel it actually. Kind of come out. And then in. Okay, make sure that back view. Just gotta make sure that our bevel. Oh crap, we just. There we go. Doesn't interfere with our actual piece. Okay. And then bevel it one more time. Whoa. Okay, so we beveled too much the first time. Okay. And then like that. Let me turbo smooth it. This is what we get, which is a good start. It's actually way better than the other side that we did. Okay. And let's go into our editable poly here. All right. And we kind of want to select all of these vertices that we just created. Oops, wrong side. Uh, all of these ones, maybe. Maybe, is that it? Eh. I'm just clicking the polygons here. And we'll just actually grow. And we'll scale those in just a bit. We're just trying to flatten it out pretty much. That way we'll get a flat contour. And then polygon shrink. And just scale it in ever so slightly. Okay. I think we went a little bit too far out with that, so we'll just grow. W and move it back in a bit. All right, and now we can adjust our vertices individually. So, for example, over here, these need to come out a bit. So, just drag them out. Okay, and these as well. Oops. All right, let's get these up. Okay. Looks like uh, these lines are a little too close, so let's drag them back, maybe out just a bit. Okay, we're just trying to avoid any unnecessary kind of crimping. And over here as well, these need to move back. Okay, and 
you can do it on a vertice basis. See how that looks. Much better. And right here we have a lot of hard edges, so we need to click these points and drag them over there. That'll eliminate that problem. And then these are a bit too hard as well, so just kind of move them a bit farther out. Like so, and that'll smooth that entire area out in just a bit. And then for these, let's do a similar thing. We just placed them a bit too close, so our edge is a bit too hard for my liking. Not that it's bad, but it's something we can fix and should fix. Okay. There you go. So we have a much smoother transition. Uh, let's go in here and click these and bring them out a bit. Okay. Click these ones. Maybe bring these down just a tad. Okay, and the same goes for this. Okay, and then let's get these ones. All right, there we go. And that is looking way better. Okay, let's go back up here and see what we can do to address some of these issues. So we got points kind of floating up. Okay. There we go. And I think that'll about do it for that. Click this. Oops, watch out. And drag it right in there. Okay, now we can adjust the size of this. Just so it'll fit our layout here. Okay, nothing too big, just shrinking it a bit in certain places. All right. There we go and maybe get this just a bit skinnier. There we go. Okay. So we can delete this spline that we used. All right, let's hide selection there. Save as 14. All right, that's going to be awesome. Very, very, very cool. Uh, let's click on one of these. Shift drag it over, press E. Rotate 180, and then go into our top view here, I guess. Just kind of drag it about into place, perspective, and click it, R to scale. And 
make it pretty big. Okay, there we go. And then shift drag it over there. E, give it a good rotate. They're still not quite the same. All right, there we go. We have that one. And let's see. I think there's another one of these right over here. Okay. And scale that one in. It's a little one. W and just shift drag it. Oops. This way. E. Rotate it a bit. There we go. And I think, my friends, that, that has completed the modeling portion of our flintlock pistol. So if you've made it this far, congratulations. Uh, that's pretty impressive. It's been a long one. I think we're probably close to four hours now, maybe. And so with that, I'll conclude this part, and I will see you in the next part. Make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube page, and later.